Hey everybody, John Wright, Director of Public Relations for Hardin County Schools, and believe it or not, we are ready for the 23-24 school year. It seems like the summers fly by. I know if you have children, uh, which if you're watching this, you probably do. Uh, if you have children, those, those summers uh, move a lot quicker, and of course July, I think, moves faster than any other month, especially for Laura Beth Hayes, the new principal at North Park Elementary School in, in Laura Beth. I would say you probably had a quick summer. <laughs> very quick. <laughs> yeah, very, very, very quick. Very fast summer. Yes. So new, new principal here at North Park, tell us a little bit about you and, and what families can expect when they see you standing in the doorway. Absolutely. Um, well, um, as you said, my name is Laura Beth Hayes. Um, I'm excited um, to start my 21st year in education okay. um, and very excited to be here at North Park. I've been assistant principal at Creekside for the last couple of years and so um, I'm ready for a new adventure here. Um, I think parents can expect here um, when they come to North Park that we're going to be um, very um, geared toward their children and the age group that is here at North Park. I think we have a really unique situation with just being an early childhood center mm -hmm. that everything that we do is really focused on the needs of just three, four, and five year olds. Mm -hmm. So they can expect um, you know, the, the daily schedule, the environment, um, just the way that we structure everything to really be tailored to that demographic. The North Park is unique. It's mm -hmm. just preschool and kindergarten. So kindergarten students will be here first, about 350, what, about 350, 400 kids? About, around 350 right okay. now. Okay, yes. so 400 yes. or 350 kindergartners for about two weeks. Yes. And then and then the then. preschoolers move in. <laughs> so, but, but tell us how, um, Tell us how this school is unique because it, it that's the that's the clientele. I mean, mm -hmm. the oldest student here yes. is five, maybe maybe six, just turned six years old. Yes. So how is that different from uh, an elementary school that goes all the way to grade five? Absolutely. So we have to kind of put like a you know a lens on to kind of filter mm -hmm. a lot of our decisions through. Like, okay, mm -hmm. is this going to be appropriate for that age group? Is this going to be something they connect to? Mm -hmm. And so we've been um, doing a lot of work this summer to kind of just look at some of the things we do and think would this be more appropriate for a K five setting or or how can we take this and make it very relatable to a young child and so even just the posters on our walls going over our expectations using very um, kid-friendly language um, just to make sure that we're giving them the best foundation possible. Uh, I know this year you're taking on a, a beehive uh, mm -hmm. theme. Talk about that. Yes, so they have um, used bees for their um, PBIS um, motif in the past so PBIS you know as you know is our positive approach to behavior um, and so we decided to kind of capitalize on that a little bit. We're so the tiny Trojans too. I'm very proud to be part of the, right. the North Harden line, but um, we think that bees are maybe a little more relatable. So we're sure. going to remind them to be a lot of different things this year. We've got mm -hmm. a bee costume. We've got um, we're putting up a lot of new posters with bees. Um, we're um, changing kind of our mission statement here too. It's going to be called Five in the Hive, and we have okay. taken a lot of feedback from stakeholders on what are the five most important things um, for us as a school that we're going to focus on here this year. Okay. If I'm a, I'm a first-time kindergarten parent, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm a first-time col <laughs> college parent here yeah. in a few days, but but um, I'm a first-time kindergarten parent. You know, what should I be doing? You know, obviously the school year is approaching, but there are some things probably I can still be doing, maybe talking to my child about you know, hey, kindergarten's coming and it's going to be a great place. Absolutely. First thing would, um, that you could do is just is talk up how exciting it's going to be mm -hmm. and fun. Mm -hmm. And that's really, that's actually one of our five in the hive components is that at North Park, we're going to have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at the kids, you know, the age, it, it, it should be, it should be just a magical fun place mm -hmm. with a lot of um, new learning and excitement. And so we want them to, you know, build up school, help them to know that this is going to be a great experience. Um, the other thing you can do is, is daily read to them. Mm -hmm. And I cannot reiterate that enough. Um, they just need to be read to. They need to see books, hold them, turn pages, see how you're reading left to right, and, and just seeing that print is so important all year. Um, another thing is practice with them how to unzip their backpack, how to open their lunchbox, open the things that are in their lunchbox. will certainly help them, but those are skills sometimes that um, parents forget about maybe, you know, and so if we can work on some of those um, self-help type of skills, mm -hmm. that'd be great too. I've heard Carlina Sharon, who's going to be in this uh, program later, I've always heard her talk about about, you know, just when you're driving down the road, re read, read the signs, mm -hmm. you know, just talk to, yes. to kids. And I know when you and I, not to say that that's a lost art, but that, that probably happened more when you and I yes. were growing up because yes. we didn't have this. Exactly. Uh, and exactly. so, uh, and it, I've been guilty of this. It's very easy to give your child a, a phone or a device, 
But it, that good old conversation really, Absolutely. Uh, it, you know, it's something that they're still going to need when they get here. Yes, and you can play games, you know, like let's see if we can find an A while we're driving down the road. You mm -hmm. know, just like games we might have played years ago on mm -hmm. the interstate or things like that. But they're great just to help them make those connections. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, um, North Park is a, is a unique facility. You are new, uh, mm -hmm. Mrs. Miss Morgan, Mrs. Morgan, the uh, assistant principal, not the superintendent, right. uh, it, is, new. is new. So, um, some some things that you guys have really worked on this this uh, you know the summer, the off season. What have you all done to help make North Park a, an even greater place than it already okay. is? Um, well, the first thing that we've done is really try to get out in the community some. Mm -hmm. um, since we are, you know, she's been here for many years, but since I'm new to um, th uh, my role and she's new to her specific mm -hmm. role, we decided to get out. We've gone, um, we followed the food bus, we've gone to some events, um, just try to, to meet people um, and make some connections. So that was really important. It, that will also be a continued focus mm -hmm. that will be important as well, um, that we are not just here at the school, but that we were an embedded part of mm -hmm. um, the Radcliffe and Von Grove and communities. Mm -hmm. Um, some other things we've been working on, just kind of sprucing some things up. Um, again, we want kids to walk in and just like, wow, be excited to come to school and to be fresh and, and colorful and engaging. Um, I've been trying to work on some things to encourage the staff too. Um, it's it, it being a, a little bit unique situation. You know, you've got to have a lot of energy <laughs> to work with 600 plus, you know, three, right. four, and five year olds. So right. I've been trying to find some ways to encourage the staff mm -hmm. and redoing their staff room and some different things. Mm -hmm. um, but I, probably our, you know, our biggest focus has really just been honing in on what is it that our students are going to be learning this year mm -hmm. and what are we going to do to help make that connection between home and school mm -hmm. to accelerate that mm -hmm. um, and if they're not meeting expectations what are we doing to support that as well right well before we went on uh, take you started you, you were talking about the communication piece of that you yes. know set, setting goals look this is what we're going to be doing in September and um, wh where is where is um, where's your son or daughter? Where are they lining up yes. for, for those goals? Talk yes. about that. Yeah, so um, and kindergarten is just so different mm -hmm. than it was when, when we were in school mm -hmm. and when honestly a lot of parents um, may not realize they have the expectation uh, of kindergarten mm -hmm. um, right now. So one thing that is important to us is to communicate that to families that mm -hmm. when we're heading into the first nine weeks of the school year, these are the, you know, this is what they should be able to do in math. This is what they should be able to do in mm -hmm. reading um, and what's expected for mastery for a typical kindergartner by mm -hmm. the end of that nine weeks. Um, then we're going to check in at a midpoint and just give uh, parents a, just kind of a quick checklist like, hey, you know, um, John is doing a great job. Here's what he's mastered so far. Here are some areas he still needs to work on to be on target. Um, then um, the Hardin County Schools has done a great job revising the, um, the report, report card. card. And it's really quantified now where you can specifically see ranges of where your child, you know, what mm -hmm. they've mastered and the, the level of that mastery. Um, so that's going to provide them some more feedback as well. And then we um, are working on some materials to send home to parents so that if you are, if your child is struggling with something, here's something you can do tangible mm -hmm. at home to work on that. I think that information is really huge um, and as far as helping people be able to move forward. Um, everybody wants their child to be successful mm -hmm. um, and but sometimes we don't always know you know like my, my kids are older now and sometimes I'm like I, I don't know exactly what they need to know for this higher level math course so being able to empower parents with information and resources I think is going to be very helpful um, and you know we all learn and grow at different rates. Right. Um, and so there might be some students who aren't meeting that mastery yet, and that's okay. We're going to show the parents what we're doing here, and then again communicate what they could, you know, reinforce at home too. Because this this is really, uh, Miss Hayes, the, the the foundation of of all learning. Absolutely. What, what, what you're doing Absolutely. here. Absolutely. So, and it's probably uh, the foundation. Talk about this. The foundation for being a. a a good, not not a good parent, but a parent that really learns how to communicate with their child and, yes. and their parent, I guess more their teachers yes. uh, about uh, about how my child or how our child children are doing. Exactly, exactly. I think sometimes, just like in anything, um, if, if something is unfamiliar or new, mm -hmm. sometimes there can be like a gap where we, we don't know how to meet, you know, in the middle mm -hmm. and collaborate together. And like I said, I know parents want their children to be successful. I know teachers want their students mm -hmm. To be successful and so sometimes it's just breaking down that that barrier that hey we're a collaborative 
partnership. And yeah. so I hope that parents that come to North Park will, will feel welcome and feel, you know, like a, a true part of the school. We're going to really beef up our communication um, and try to make sure that they're very aware of what's going on. So I think you're exactly right. Giving, giving parents and children a strong foundation to see that the very best way you can support your child is to communicate with the school and the teacher and, and just to be attuned to what's going on in your child's, you know, daily right. life at school, but also what they're learning. And a lot of times that that's the secret there. Right. T talk about transitioning parents. This transition is tough for them yes. uh, as they move from yes. uh, my, my, ch my child's been with me now for three, four, f almost five years. Mm -hmm. And now I'm sending them away for, for a big chunk of the day. Yes. Um, how do parents, give some advice on how parents can get through that transition. Okay. Well, I've, I've been there before. I know you have too. <laughs> yes. um, you know, I think, think of it as a, a wonderful opportunity. Mm -hmm. And think of it, you know, I, I know um, my mom was a teacher. And I remember when I was kind of having a hard time about my, my daughter going mm -hmm. for the first time. She said, well, you know, we don't want to hold our children back. This is what we do. You plant yeah. roots and seeds to, you know, to help them grow. And that's what you want is to see the fruit of that. And so you don't want to hold them back in any way. Uh, so I think that, you know, for parents, just understand we, we are not, um, we're an extension of what you have already established for your children. Right. And we're just, you know, we're just sharing them with you during the day, but giving them an opportunity to do things that you can't do at home necessarily. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think if you think of it as, this is the path that we're starting them on because we all want our children to be successful adults. Right. <laughs> that's the goal. Right, that's right. And, and this is this is the start. Uh, so f first day of school, uh, some mm -hmm. folks probably be seeing this after the first day, but first day of school, you can bring your children in and yes. say your goodbyes and probably there's probably a boohoo yes. room for maybe children and, and parents. <laughs> all of us, no. <laughs> that's right. No, we are very excited to welcome parents. We want them to feel welcome to come mm -hmm. in the first day of school. They can certainly put them on the bus, you know, take them to the drop-off line, but we are going to have an opportunity for them to come in the front of the school and then we're going to have a really nice setup in the cafeteria with some photo opportunities and we'll have a lot of staff there to welcome a lot of friendly faces for a lot of our kindergartners who went to preschool here we're going to have a lot of our preschool mm -hmm. staff in there so they'll see oh there's my teacher or I know her mm -hmm. and then they'll help um, escort them from there just because it's when you um, go back with your child then it just kind of increases the opportunity for some tears mm -hmm. or some separation struggles and mm -hmm. then other children see parents and it just kind of complicates things. Mm -hmm. Plus, we want to be safe. Expect your child to be very tired on day one. Oh right? my goodness. And yeah. to act like they don't They'll remember well. anything they've done. <laughs> yes, yes. So we, we plan to share a lot of pictures and, yeah. uh, you know, highlights of the day because I know they get home and you're like, what did you do today? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. So social media is a good place to catch uh, some introductory piece on you and also yes. uh, by the time this airs, there'll probably be something about there's a new drop-off pattern. Yes, we're going to be oh. sharing that this week. So um, for our kindergarten families, it will not change other than it will hopefully be a little speedier mm -hmm. for them and um, we are going to be separating um, preschool and kindergarten drop off so kindergarten parents will still come around the big drive around the school and get in our car rider line um, and then when preschool starts in a couple weeks like you mentioned they will actually park in the front of the school and then walk their child to the front door where um, we will receive them and get them straight into breakfast so there's some, multiple reasons for that right. to kind of help with some different right. issues we were having. Right, and that, that'll, that'll be on uh, North Absolutely. Park's social media page. Uh, you probably have some new staff here uh, for do. the upcoming year. Talk we about do. that. We've, we've hired several people. Um, we are a pretty large staff here. Yeah. And so there's a lot yeah. of turnover, you know, in the summer, but um, we have hired four new kindergarten teachers and two new preschool teachers. Wow. And then um, probably around, um, I think eight or nine classified staff as well. Good. So we've got a lot of great staff for turning but a lot of really eager right. um, people who are very excited that right. want to be here. Right. Well Ms. Hayes and her team are, are remarkable. Next we're going to talk with Carlina Sharon who's a director of early childhood at the district level and she's going to talk with some more specific things about um, well, I guess more broad things about what you can do to get your child ready uh, for not only for kindergarten but some things that you can do to uh, talk about preschool and some things uh, that our parents can do uh, to help in that process as well. Hi, I'm Laura Beth Hayes, the principal at North Park Elementary, and today I'm going to share with you our transportation plans. We have made some revision um, to our drop-off and pickup procedures, and we just want to share those with you so that everybody um, has an understanding and we can have a very smooth and successful process. All right, so kindergarten families, if your child is a car rider in the morning or in the afternoon, you are going to turn into this lane 
which is um, a, a road that goes around our school. So from either direction, you're going to come in and you'll see the sign here where it says North Park drop off. Again, this is for our kindergarten families in the morning only. Um, in the past, it has been for preschool and kindergarten, but this year, this is only going to be a kindergarten drop off lane. So kindergarten parents, you will come through here um, and you will get in line. We will have our buses unloading first. So up near the school, there will be all of our buses parking. They will unload our bus riders and then we will allow our car riders um, to enter and start to unload students. So you'll just get in this lane. There'll be um, probably a, a pretty big line um, of car riders in the morning. And as you get close to the end of the road here, um, we have some signs that are being um, produced that say things like, good morning, get your backpack ready, say your goodbyes so that we can make that a pretty speedy process. Um, so you'll be waiting in this area around and through here until the buses unload. And then once those buses unload, you will be directed by staff to come forward and around this area right here around. We'll have a lot of teachers parked back here. Um, and then you'll come here. The buses will be gone and you will come through here. They will be making two rows um, of, of cars. There will be staff out here to open the door, help get your child um, out, and then they will exit up here to the left into our courtyard through the gates there. So they will go through there, then they will go get their breakfast and they will be ready to head to their classroom to start their day. When it is time for you to exit, you will go out this way and then you will see there will be um, staff members directing you toward, back toward the road. I'm gonna pause here for a moment because I want to explain to our preschool families. In the past, you have been part of the car rider line, but this year, Preschool families are going to come and park in this parking lot. You see we have a lot of cars here today. There will be um, spots saved and reserved for preschool families. You will park and walk your child to the door. I will be at the door to greet your child, and then I will have other staff members who will escort them to the cafeteria to get them started on their breakfast. Um, there's a variety of reasons why we changed this. Primarily, we wanted to get your preschool children in the building sooner. Um, not have them standing outside in inclement or cold weather, get them inside eating their breakfast ready to start their day sooner, and reduce the wait time in that car rider line so we can get everybody's day started promptly um, by 7.30 a.m. So preschool families, you will park here, walk your child just like you see a family um, walking in right there to the front doors. When it is time to exit preschool and kindergarten families, we are going to ask you to uh, obey the sign that we have here, you will see it's asking for you to turn right only. The reason for this is if you see here with the, the four lanes going on, if we have preschool families and coming in from both directions and kindergarten families and preschool families trying to leave, we could have a bottleneck situation here. So we are going to have a staff member um, directing you and encouraging you to turn right. And so you can make this right turn here and then you can quickly make a U-turn right here on the left and go back toward the left if that is the direction that you do need to go. So we ask that you help us with that request. That's really going to help make our process much smoother um, and get everybody to work or wherever you need to be on time in um, a much timely fashion. So thank you um, for your assistance with that. In the afternoon, both preschool and kindergarten will use the, the car rider line um, that I showed you at the beginning of this video. And you will follow the process that we've used in the past. You will come around um, and you will um, pick up your child in that same spot that I showed you where you would be dropping off if you were a kindergarten parent. So that lane will be for kindergarten and preschool in the afternoon because you dismiss at different times. So again, we just appreciate your cooperation and your patience while we try a new traffic pattern and a new procedure. But again, our goal is to make this an efficient procedure and process for our students and help everyone be ready to start their day in the best way possible. Hello everybody, welcome back to HCS Matters. Uh, we have changed our venue and now we're hanging out with Carlina Sharon, the Director of Early Childhood uh, education for Hardin County Schools and, and Carlina we spent the first half of our program talking with Miss Hayes at North Park Elementary School and just talk about the uniqueness of that of that facility having preschoolers and kindergartners you know almost 600 people uh, under five mm -hmm. years old uh, at any given day 
that is uh, it's a very unique situation. But it, very, but it thrives. It, it does. It, it, mm -hmm. it does well. Yeah, very unique situation. I think when any time you have your youngest children in the building all by themselves, they mm -hmm. certainly bring um, a lot of positives, and then they have their own special needs. You know. Mm -hmm. Uh, there in the building, but it's been a great thing for us um, that all of our children on the northern end of the county, no matter where they live or no matter where they move, um, go to the same building and they all go together. Mm -hmm. So it's like they make a, I always think it's a positive that they make a group of friends while they're at North Park. Then they kind of go their own way um, to four feeder schools, mm -hmm. and then some of them come back together, depending on which middle school you go to, mm -hmm. but all of them come back together when they go to high school. Yeah, yeah. So it is a nice big cycle there. Yes. Yeah, abs absolutely. But talk, let's talk about uh, early childhood as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I, I, I think the, the perception is, well, school starting, it's, I've got a three-year-old, I really do think they should be in preschool, but now school starting is too late. The answer is it's never, never. too late to get into preschool. Yeah, absolutely not. Never too late. It, not um, even in May. No, no. <laughs> we 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 um, screen and evaluate all year long. Mm -hmm. And what I tell families is, even if it, you're just thinking about it, go ahead and apply because there are very few situations that families of young children can have their child screened and get some information about mm -hmm. them. And in the public preschool program, you can do that. So mm -hmm. we can screen your child. We can tell you any areas that we see that may be an area of strength or any area we see that may be an area that you want to continue to work on. Mm -hmm. And we want children in our program because our program is very successful and we are showing a lot of really good data that's showing um, if you are in Hardin County Schools preschool, then you are um, as or more prepared for the start of kindergarten mm -hmm. than our children who are coming to us from no structured situation. Mm -hmm. Of course, well, you're, 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 I'm sure you're getting that from what's called the Brigantz uh, test. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Brigantz, just talk about that a little bit. That's, that's what we use to determine whether you're ready for kindergarten and what, and what, um, you know, what interventions we need to, to use sure. to, to make everybody an even, an even keel. Yes, and it is. It, it's, what, it's not only what we use, it's what the state of Kentucky mm -hmm. uses. Every incoming kindergartner in the state of Kentucky is given the Brigantz. Um, they are, um, that is used to measure how ready they were for school. It in no way keeps children out of school. Mm -hmm. The only requirement you have to attend kindergarten is to be five years old on or before August the 1st. Mm -hmm. You may go to kindergarten then. You have to go to kindergarten if you turn six years old on or before August 1st. Okay. So parents kind of have a choice. I can send them when they're five or wait until they're six. Mm -hmm. But the Brigantz just gives us an idea and gives parents an idea of how ready they are for school. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether they are ready. There are three categories, ready with interventions, ready, and ready with um accelerations, um, which ready with interventions means that there were just some areas that we saw that were a little um, not as ready as they could have been, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter which category you fall in there, all teachers jump right in and start getting everybody moving forward, mm -hmm. no matter where they come to us. Mm -hmm. If you know all your alphabet, then you're moving forward to mm -hmm. start reading. If you still need to know your alphabet, then they're moving you forward there because that's what you know, kindergarten and preschool teachers do. They take them from where they get them and right. want them to grow. Used to be, uh, when I first started with the district, preschool was every day, half a day, whether it be morning mm -hmm. or afternoon, and then everybody was off on Friday. Yes. It's changed some uh, since, since then. Talk about that. It has. Um, so when we say off on Friday, that was simply just the children. Right. Um, preschool teachers, oh. that was an extremely busy day for them Absolutely. because there are a lot of regulations that go along with preschool that don't necessarily go along with other grade levels. Mm -hmm. So preschool teachers have a lot on their plate. Uh, we kind of have a combination of things. We have um, children that can attend five days 
a week, children that attend three days a week, and children that attend two days a week. Mm -hmm. And some of that is based on age, and some of that is based on number of slots we have. Some of that's based on attendance that you've been with us in the program. Mm -hmm. We try to accommodate everything that we can, mm -hmm. But um, we do not have, we do not receive enough funding to offer five days for everybody. Okay. But our, uh, we do have some days built in during the year that our teachers use for planning days, home visit days, um, you know, all the, the things that they have to take care of. Oh. But we, we, a lot of our students go to school five days a week from 7.15 until one o'clock. Wow, so um, the, the preschool day, T tell us about tell tell us how that looks. I know obviously there are certain there's lots of variables, but a general preschool day, uh, what what a preschool teacher does uh, sure. with students throughout the day. So um, a preschool day is super fun because you know one one thing we're very fortunate in Hardin County to offer free breakfast and free lunch, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Um, we do centers like you know a lot of grade levels do centers. We have whole group and small group. Uh, we move a lot. We go outside every single day that the weather allows. Um, the only time we don't go outside is when the weather is dangerous. If it's raining, we go outside. If it's cold, we go outside. We only only when it's dangerous would we not. We do a lot of um, you know field trips to try to you know provide a lot of experiences for our children. We sing, we dance, we have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, most of our classes, or all, really all of our classes, have a snack at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So uh, typically all of our schools, except for Lakewood Elementary School, start school around 7.15 when they get off the bus, mm -hmm. and then we end at 1 o'clock. And we end at one o'clock so we can get them, you know, back to their next setting, whether that be childcare or home. And then that allows our buses to get back to elementary schools and back into so the routes. rotation. Right. So we certainly are a, um, a I think a, a school-wide community player because we really do try to do whatever it helps to um, help everybody get to school on time. Mm -hmm. You, you said a word there that I've heard you say so much, fun. Mm -hmm. And um, preschool, believe it or not, you, you learn through fun, and mm -hmm. that's, that's proven. Mm -hmm. Talk about how, that's the, how that works. You do. Um, we really do try to make it a lot of fun because it is the you know, initial introduction into school, and you want kids to, think, you know, to know that school mm -hmm. can be fun. Uh, we do a lot of learning. A ton of learning but we do try to frame it in all things that are developmentally appropriate for three and four year old children mm -hmm. and that involves music and dance and songs and you know playing and children can learn, learn a ton through playing and role playing and they and they do a lot of that they do that naturally mm -hmm. even without you know providing those experiences mm -hmm. but we certainly do try to provide those experiences uh, we, we have um I know this goes without saying, but not only do we have preschool teachers, we have great preschool teachers um, our, our, and assistants. Um, you know, we have several Kentucky Department of Education classrooms of distinction that have, that have earned that status. But um, just just talk about, um, you know, certainly preschool teachers, or all teachers are special, but preschool teachers, I mean, they, they really get down in the... <laughs> They go down in the in mud and everything else and, and do what they need to do. They do. We we are very, um, I feel like we are very fortunate. We I feel like we have the best preschool teachers in the state of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. I'd probably put them up against anybody in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, they not only are the regular education teacher, they are also the special education teacher. They are the only, um, really one of the only um, teacher certifications that has both of that together. Okay. So they are an expert in both. They are, you know, very conscientious of doing things that are developmentally appropriate. Um, they work hard. Uh, I seldom ever plan anything for them with an outside trainer that the outside trainer does not tell me over and over and over how lucky we are to have such wonderful teachers. Wow. And they are wonderful. They want to learn, they want to grow, they want their kids to grow, they love mm -hmm. their families. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they truly go above and beyond every mm -hmm. single day. The our elementary schools, I think, do a great job of, of involving preschool. Mm -hmm. And when I say elementaries, I mean, North Park, obviously, preschool and kindergarten, but 
Uh, the other schools, the Creeksides, the Lakewoods, the Burkheads, uh, they all do a great job of, of involving preschool in all they, everything they do. They certainly do, and I'm going to say that I will give a shout out to not only our Board of Education, who have always been very supportive of preschool, mm -hmm. but our current superintendent, our former superintendent, mm -hmm. who get it and realize that that makes mm -hmm. a huge difference, and our principals, because our principals really do, um, they look at data, they look at kids becoming acclimated to kindergarten, mm -hmm. and they can tell children who um, have never been in school and children who have been in our preschool. School. And they are very supportive because I think they see that the experiences we're providing for children are making them feel very engaged and making them love school and they're, they're learning. So they want their, all of their students mm -hmm. to attend preschool. The, the, we talked about this with Ms. Hayes. Just talk about the foundation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I remember when we, have several, we had several uh, classrooms of distinction, Mrs. Johnston was superintendent at the time, and mm -hmm. she would take a block and stand on it and you know, put all of her weight on, this is what preschool, this, mm -hmm. this is what early childhood does. Mm -hmm. Talk about uh, how, how, some, how you have seen these students in preschool and in our preschool programs succeed, not only in their career, in their educational career, but even in their, you know, after they graduate high school. Mm -hmm. Um, absolutely, it makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I look at them, when I look at our children independent-wise and socially, it's amazing how much they grow and amazing what, um, they need those skills to be able to be successful later on. But one thing that I think about um, a lot is reading and math yeah. skills. Yeah. Um, you know, being able to, to read on grade level and do math on grade level at each one of those grade levels is so important because it just makes you ready for the next Thing that you learn mm -hmm. and you know when you look at the statistics of children who are not able to read on grade level by the time they're in third grade it's alarming mm -hmm. um, and that all starts in preschool that yeah. it actually starts before they come to preschool mm -hmm. it starts with you know families exposing their children to books and reading to them and families exposing their children to numeracy and talking about numbers mm -hmm. and then we carry it forward um, by focusing a lot on phonological awareness yep. which is the foundation for being able to you know be able to understand phonics yes. better and being able to comprehend stories and we work really really hard on mm -hmm. that because mm -hmm. we want all of our children to be you know ready to learn at very yep. high levels in the area of math and reading because the other subjects will come. Um, we certainly do science mm -hmm. and social studies, mm -hmm. but those things will also be better and better as a child can read on grade level. Right. There's a lot more information um, on the district website, on the, uh, kindergarten, um, early childhood edu education that with Hardin County Schools has social media pages. You can find more information there. There's so much you can do to get your child ready, not only for preschool, but for kindergarten. Uh, and we've got to slip away, but I, I tell you, I, we could talk with forever with Carlina because she is, she and her team are so uh, full of wisdom and, and able to help children succeed and by setting such a strong foundation. Like we said, for more information on our early childhood programs, just go to the Hardin County Schools website. You can find information there and uh, again on, on social media as well. Thank you for watching this edition of HCS Matters.